Hello everyone, welcome to Microsam. In this tutorial video, we'll be learning about how to use the 3D annotator. Okay, so let's get started. Let's go to plugins, segment anything for microscopy and choose the 3D annotator. Here we go. On the right, we have the annotator widget. Let's open a sample image. There we have it. Let's drop the image layer at the end. Now let's go to the embedding widget. There it is. Before we get started, let's review the embedding widget, which we will use to load the pre-computed embeddings as it takes a couple of minutes on the CPU resources. And there is the settings drop down, which opens the settings for computing the image embeddings. And the next one is the drop down for device, which chooses the PyTorch device for your computational resource. The next one is the embedding safe path, where the embeddings are stored or loaded from. The next one is the path to your custom weight checkpoints wherein you can load the custom fine-tuned checkpoints from. The next one is the tiling window shape in X and Y dimensions. And the other one is the overlapping window shape for the tiling operation, the X and Y dimensions. And the last option is if you prefer segmentation decoder, for the fine-tuned microsam models. This option allows you to compute the image embeddings. Let's go ahead and load the pre-computed image embeddings which we already have. Now let's click on compute embeddings to load them and microsam automatically validates this option for us and updates the chosen model which was used for pre-computing the image embeddings there we go this has been loaded for the vitbem organelles model now let's go ahead and do automatic segmentation for the current slice this takes a few seconds as we see and this was segmented only for one slice. We see that there are some incorrect segmentations. Now let's go ahead and apply this to the 3D volume. The automatic instance segmentation state has also been pre-computed. In this case, the segmentation for the end-to-end -end volume would take under a minute Otherwise, it would take a few minutes on a CPU resource. Now let's go ahead and press automatic segmentation for the entire volume. Here is the progress bar, which keeps you updated about the segmentation status. And we have it. The entire volume has been segmented. Let's have a look at it. There we go. Okay, we see over here some objects have been segmented incorrectly. Over here as well. And some of these segmentations haven't been merged along the Z axis. Let's go ahead and fix them. So with the pick mode, we select the background to remove those objects using the fill mode. We change the N edit dimension to three to make the rectifications in three dimensions. Let's go ahead and remove these objects. There we go.
let's also remove one of these unmerged segmentations in favor of interactive segmentation. We remove these and we remove this section as well. Let's also go ahead and remove the segmentations for a few objects so that we can test the interactive segmentation tool as well. This would be one of the objects we remove. Let's go ahead and choose the fill bucket option. We remove this. Let's remove another object to demonstrate interactive segmentation. Now, once we are confident about our segmentations, we desire to save these automatic segmentations. So let's go ahead and change the layer to auto segmentation layer, commit this objects and there we go. Now let's get started with interactively annotating these objects. So we choose the point prompt first, mark a positive point prompt on the object and segment this slice using S key binding. And we use shift S to segment across all frames. There we see all the frames have been segmented for the particular object. We observe that segmenting the object across all frames takes roughly under 5 seconds. We go ahead and commit this. Now let's go ahead and segment another object which is this one. We use box prompts for this object. There we go. This has been segmented in the current frame. Let's go ahead and see how the segmentation looks for the consecutive frames. And we see that the object has been segmented along all the respective slices as we desire. There are however some incorrect projected segmentations. Let's go ahead and clear those segmentations from the respective slices. And there we have the object segmented along the z-axis. Now let's go ahead and commit this currently segmented object. Now let's choose another object, which is this one over here. Let's go ahead and choose point prompts to put a, put a positive point prompt on the object. And segment it along all frames. And there we have the object segmented along all the frames. Now let's go ahead and commit the segmented object. Now let's segment the final object which is missing along all the slices. Let's choose a middle slice, put a positive point prompt on the object and segment all slices. And there we go. We see that the segmentation has taken place for all the slices. We see segmenting this object roughly takes under 30 seconds. However, we see there are some artifacts from before. Let's go ahead and commit the segmentation. Now let's go ahead and rectify these artifacts in the committed object layers by picking the right label choice and filling it with that. 
Let's do it for all these slices. And we have a rectified now. Now let's go ahead and save the committed object layers by saving the selected layer, selecting our desired directory and file name. So we call it save loopy.tiff. Let's go ahead and save this. And there we go. This is how you can also save the segmented volumes. In this additional section, we'll also show some additional features for interactive segmentation. Let's first choose this object for segmentation using point prompts. Let's put a positive point prompt in the first frame, segment it in this frame, and then segment it along all the frames. This is the settings option, which makes the choice of different projection methods. The first one is the projection method choice. Here are the possible projection methods which are used for segmenting consecutive slices. From the top, the box method uses the box prompts for segmenting consecutive slices. The mask method uses the segmented masks as inputs for segmenting consecutive slices. The point method uses a combination of positive and negative point prompts derived from the segmentation masks. The points and the mask method combines the points method and the mask method. And the single point method derives a single positive point prompt from the segmented masks. The next parameter is the IOU threshold which is the criterion for stopping to project the segmentations by comparing the quality of segmentation for the adjacent slices. And the box extension parameter is the factor by which the box prompts are increased to account for the possible change of object sizes in adjacent slices. And there we see the object has been segmented along all the slices. Now let's commit this object. Let's try segmenting another object. So we put a positive point prompt, segment the current slice. And let's say we desire to stop our segmentation in this slice. We put a negative point prompt over here and then segment all the frames. We see over here that the segmentation did take place and stopped a slice before we put our negative point prompt. Let's go ahead and comment our segmentation. Let's try the similar behavior of stopping at a particular slice using the box prompts. So over here we start with a box prompt. And then we place a negative point prompt at let's say this slice and then we segment all the slices. We see that the segmentation has happened along all the slices and stopped at our desired spot. Let's go ahead and commit this. And there we go. In this additional video, we will be showing how you can interactively correct the projected segmentations along the consecutive slices. Now we choose the point prompts for making the segmentations. We choose this object for our segmentation. Let's go ahead and put a positive prompt, segment it, and then segment it across all the frames. 
we see that the segmentation was possible in all the frames but we see that there are some issues with some of the frames let's go ahead and fix these segmentations by putting a positive prompt on the object and negative prompt outside the object and there we go let's do it for another frame and as we see this is how you can rectify the segmentations for the consecutive slices now we go ahead and commit our segmented object and there we go this was the tutorial for 3d annotation for 3d images stay tuned for the next video on the annotator tracking thank you so much for watching